Hello students. Today we will discuss regarding the surgical anatomy of the stomach. Stomach, as far as the surgeon is concerned, is a very important organ. Half of the problems of the body comes from the GAT as far as the surgeon is concerned. So, surgical anatomy of the stomach is important at any level of surgery. Be it a medical student, an intern, a surgeon, an assistant professor, postgraduates, professor, HOD, everybody has to know regarding the surgical anatomy of the stomach. Coming to the different parts of the stomach. The esophagus joins the stomach at the gastroesophageal junction. From there, at that point is the cardia, the uppermost part of the stomach, where the esophagus joins the stomach. That point is the cardia, where there is the this is actually a continuation of the lower esophageal sphincter. Then we can see the fundus of the stomach. You should also see, you should, all, can also, you should be also able to identify the greater curvature of the stomach and the lesser curvature of the stomach and between the curvatures lies the body of the stomach the antrum of the stomach we can see here the pylorus where there is pyloric, pyloric sphincter so these are the different parts of the stomach let us just peel off the layers of the stomach and see what is inside you can see the initially you can see the mucosal folds here with the gastric rugae and you can see and the lesser curvature of the folds are less and we can also see the pylorus, the pyloric antrum, the pyloric canal and the sphincter. And after the sphincter comes the duodenum. Now coming to the mucosa, coming, uh, coming to the wall of the stomach. After the mucosa, we can see the oblique muscle layers, which is scanty actually overlying the mucosa. Then we have the circular muscle layer. Circular muscle layer is the only continuous layer which is spread throughout the stomach. And we can also see the longitudinal muscle layer outside the cir uh, circular layer. And after that comes the serosa. Coming to the arterial supply of the stomach. The branches of the arteries which supplies the stomach are the left gastric artery, the right gastric artery, the left gastroepiploic artery, the right gastroepiploic artery and the short gastric arteries. These are the main branches which supplies the stomach of which the bulk of it is carried by the left right gastric artery and the left and right gastroepiploic artery and the arcade which is formed between the epiploics and the gastric arteries. Now these are the branches of celiac tract. These are primarily from the branches of celiac tract. Let us just see the celiac tract. The, celiac, the branches of the celiac tract include the left gastric artery here the splenic artery and the common hepatic artery. The common hepatic artery gives off the gastroduodenal artery to become the proper hepatic artery. Now, the right gastric artery can either originate from this hepatic This is the right gastric artery. You can see the right gastric artery going like this. The right gastric artery can either originate from this hepatic artery or it can also originate from the gastroduodenal artery. Now, this is the left gastric artery which is a direct branch of celiac tract. The left, the, sometimes there can be a vessel going from the left gastric artery to the liver. Sometimes tying the left gastric artery near the origin can result in an ischemia of some part of the liver. Next comes the epiploic arteries. The epiploic arteries, you can see the left gastroepiploic artery is a branch of the splenic artery. You can see the splenic artery coming here and the left gastroepiploic artery is a branch of the splenic artery. The right gastroepiploic artery is generally a branch of the gastroduodenal artery. You can see the right gastroepiploic artery, the branch of the gastroduodenal artery. Now coming to the short gastric artery. Short gastric arteries only parts only supply some part of the fundus that is regarding that is the uh, near the fundus. The short gastric artery is a branch of the splenic artery. So, stomach is very rich in vascular in arterial supply and so as a result the anastomosis in the stomach are generally good. They will hold on. They can be mobilized a bit. It can be made into a tube for the purpose of esophagus. Even after tying three ves vessels, the stomach can live with one vessel. So, that is the importance and the richness of the vascular supply of the stomach. Now let us discuss the venous drainage of the stomach. The venous drainage of the stomach is mainly into the portal system. 
you can see the portal vein here. The portal vein is formed by the superior mesenteric vein and the splenic vein. You can see the inferior mesenteric vein draining into the splenic vein and the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein joins to form the portal vein. The venous drainage of the stomach generally parallels the arterial drainage. You can see here the left gastric vein behind the stomach and the right gastric vein anterior to the stomach. Both the left gastric vein and the right gastric vein drains into the portal vein. Here they drains into the portal vein. Now the next is the right and left gastroepiploic vein. This is the left gastroepiploic vein and this is the right gastroepiploic vein. The left gastroepiploic vein drains into the splenic vein and the right gastroepiploic vein you can see here it drains into the superior mesenteric vein finally. This, these are certain some short gastric veins. The short gastric veins also drain into the splenic vein. These short gastric veins are important because here uh, at around the fundus there are some esophageal veins which are finally draining into the azygo system cause creating a portosystemic shunt here which is an area of variceal bleed. It's an area of variceal bleed when there is portal hypertension. So as far as that is concerned, the short gastric veins are important. So the left gastric veins, the right gastric veins, the left and right gastroepiploic veins and the short gastric veins all, all finally draining into the portal system. Coming to the lymphatic drainage of the stomach. You can see the lymphatic drainage of the stomach is some very much important because it is uh, we are we have to deal with the lymphatic drainage of stomach when we go in for a lymph node dissection in carcinoma stomach. We should know about the lymphatic anatomy therefore. So the lymphatic drainage, drainage of the stomach can be divided into different zones of the stomach. So one, two, one, two, three, and four. These are the four areas where there is lymphatic drainage. This is the fourth area. Now there are nodes draining each of these points. You can see the suprapyloric nodes drains this part. The subpyloric nodes drains this much part, the area number two. The superior gastric nodes drains the area number one. And the pancreatico lineal or the pancreatico splenic nodes drains the area number three. Now, what happens is all this drainage it finally reaches from all these nodes it finally reaches the celiac nodes and the paraiotic nodes so we can see both these nodes together the from all these nodes it finally drains into the celiac nodes or the paraiotic nodes so you can see the lymphatic drainage the suprapyloric group the infrapyloric or the subpyloric group you always see the lymphatic drainage also parallels the venous drainage and arterial supply the suprapyloric group of nodes, uh, they have their drainage based on the right gastric artery and this area is generally supplied by the left gastric artery which goes into the superior gastric group of nodes and the right and, gastro right and left gastroepiploic artery areas goes into the inferior gastric, the, mainly the uh, right gastroepiploic artery and this goes into the inferior gastric subpyloric group of nodes and the short gastric artery and the left gastroepiploic artery goes into the pancreatico lineal group of nodes. We will see the arteries along with this. So, this is the right gastroepiploic artery draining into the subpyloric group of nodes. The left gastroepiploic and the splenic uh, and the short gastric arteries goes into the pancreatico splenic group of nodes. The left gastric artery, which is the area number. One as we have shown, this part goes into the superior gastric group of nodes and the area number 4 as we have shown here, as we just shown here, goes into for the suprapyloric nodes. So these are the no lymph node supply you should remember. These are the lymphatic groups you should remember. Uh, and this is one of a, one of a very commonly asked questions in the exams that to draw the lymphatic drainage of the stomach. Coming to the innervation of the stomach. In most of the uh, textbooks, we see this picture. 
and we will uh, read about the mineral nerve of grass in our sovelata and any rain posture waves and we stop it we are mainly but many a times we stay confused we are mainly concerned with the vagus nerve and the inner and its innervation to the stomach because most of the acid secretions is regulated by the parasympathetic system and the vagus nerve now you see there are two vagus nerves vagus nerves there the right vagus and the left vagus but here it is written anterior vagus and posterior vagus you see here so we should remember us the posterior vagus is the right vagus and the anterior vagus is the left vagus we have a chord left anterior right posterior larp a mnemonic is l a r p left anterior right posterior this happens due to the rotation of the stomach during the embryonic period the left vagus becomes anterior and the right vagus goes to the posterior when we see both these vagus nerve together it only creates confusion regarding the innervation now let us separate the let us separate the anterior vagus and posterior vagus and see its branches coming to the anterior vagus anterior vagus comes down right the the left vagus or the anterior vagus comes down uh, and gives hepatic branches and after that it continues to the body of the stomach giving the anterior nerves of lethargy ending as a with ga gastric branches and crops foot at the antrum now coming to the posterior vagus posterior vagus again comes down from the esophagus now gives the celiac branches after that it gives the criminal nerve of grassi and after that it comes the gastric branches and the crops foot we see what is the criminal nerve of grassi it is one of the first branch of the vagus going to the going towards the fundus of the stomach what happens is in many of many a times in case of vagotomy the criminal nerve of grassi is missed and even after the surgery the patient will have recurrence of ulcer so it is called the criminal nerve of grassi so we can say, we will come to it we are seeing the anterior vagus and the posterior vagus now we will here uh, these these uh, branches here are also called the posterior nerves of lethargy lethargy the branches of the posterior vagus giving the gastric gastric branches are also called posterior nerve of lethargy now we will come to the picture where we put this both these two together now let now we will understand this picture we are seeing the anterior vagus here its hepatic branch going and the nerves of lethargy and the cross foot here and again we are seeing the posterior vagus going going the ciliary of ciliac branches the criminal nerve of grassi going initially and after that the posterior nerves of lethargy and the cross foot why do you want to learn about vagus you want to learn about vagus because we want to learn about the vagotomy vagotomy is a very important surgery very was very important surgery before the advent of proton pump inhibitors after the advent of proton pump inhibitors vagotomy has Uh, become less popular but anyway due to the historical reasons we will discuss about the vagotomy there are three types of vagotomy they are the trungal vagotomy selective vagotomy and highly selective vagotomy you see this horizontal uh, this rectangles this is the trungal vagotomy the right vagus and the left vagus are cut but when we do the like this the supply to the pylorus the parasympathetic supply to the pylorus and the sphincter are also gone and the celiac vessels are also gone which results in certain functional problems with dyspepsia now in selective vagotomy what they do is they avoid the trunks the uh, celiac and the hepatic trunks and cut below it by you on all these cases we have to cut the criminal nerve of grassi we have to make sure that it is cut even though it is highly selective or selective vagotomy we have to cut the criminal nerve of grassi in trungal vagotomy it is not required because we are cutting it above the criminal nerve of grassi in the trunks in highly selective vagotomy we are preserving we are only cutting the nerve uh, cutting the cross foot or the final gastric branches in highly selective vagotomy and the cross foot you have to cut the criminal nerve of grassi anyway so these are the differences between in in the A highly selective vagotomy even the branches to the pylorus are also preserved so that is the difference between trungal vagotomy uh, selective vagotomy and highly selective vagotomy so we have discussed today in the, the anatomy the internal and the external anatomy the vascular supply the arterial and the venous 
the lymphatic drainage of the stomach, the parasympathetic nerve supply and innervation of the stomach. That is all regarding the surgical anatomy of the stomach, what we know before we go further into clinics. Thank you.